Hello pilots and welcome back to Flying with Overkill F-18Z Hornet and today we're going to be sidestepping from the air-to-ground munitions for just a minute because the next one on the list is the Harm Anti-Radiation Missile. The Harm Anti-Radiation Missile is exactly what it sounds like. Its purpose is to go after uh, radiation uh, targets such as uh, search radars, targeting radars, um, things of that nature that are down on the ground. Okay, and in order to effectively use the harm, you need to understand how to use the RWR, which is what we're going to be discussing today. Now, I'm not going to go into a full depth tutorial, although I will cover quite a bit. Um, but my goal is to give you guys um, an easy understanding of the RWR and its functionality, and then a couple of tips and tricks to make it a little bit easier to read. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing you need to do is make sure you come down here and you have the RWR powered on. That is the ALR-67. Okay, so uh, it is part of the startup procedure, at least for me anyway. Um, so hopefully you guys already have that on if you're airborne. Next, this is the actual RWR screen. It never changes. It will always be all the information on the RWR that the RWR is detecting will be up here. And then you can also come here to the TAC page and bring up the EW page or early warning radar screen. All right. So a couple things that I want to get out right off the bat about the RWR. Number one, first and foremost, it does not tell you range. Okay. Anything that you see on the RWR, um, a contact reference into in comparison to the center of the aircraft has nothing to do with how far away from you it is. The RWR's purpose is to detect other radar uh, emitters, okay? So it can be an aircraft, as you see here. These are actually a group of friendly F-15s that have their radar turned on. If they were to turn their radar off, they would disappear, okay? No ands, if, or buts about it. If their radar is turned off, they will never be on this screen, okay? If we are using our radar to detect them, they'll be on the radar screen, but that's something completely different. So this is simply, um, in my F-15 tutorial series, I went over a three-part series of uh, the radar, okay, and how radar works. And one of the things that I described it as is a flashlight. So the best way to think of the RWR is you're out in the middle of the night, you've got your neighbors that are down the street, and they have their flashlight on. Okay, you can see them walking around with a flashlight. You can see the flashlight, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're pointing it at you yet. Okay, and we'll go over uh, that later on. But keep that in mind. The radar is a flashlight. Okay, so we can see these F-15s have their flashlights turned on. Okay, next thing we want to talk about, since we're on the subject of it not being uh, relevant to range, let's talk about what these rings are. These are called threat rings. Okay. And how it works in the F-18 is the further away from your aircraft, so here's our aircraft, the further out the contact is, the less threatening it is. Okay, so this out here, the outer ring is called the non-lethal ring. Then you have your lethal ring and critical. The things you're going to see typically in critical are going to be like missiles. Um, I think it's actually pretty much the only thing that you'll see here um, is a missile indication. But... We'll go over that a little bit later. Hopefully, um, I set this up where it will demonstrate that appropriately. Um, this indication here, uh, the HUD but button, is exactly what it sounds like. It repeats the RWR information on the HUD. Now, when you have a whole bunch of radar contacts on here, it can get pretty jumbled up, and a lot of these can be hard to read. Now, something you can do is you come down here and press this offset button. You'll see norm offset on the RWR page. And you will see even down here, they've been split up and up here. <clears throat> now, what this does is it breaks them apart and separates them so that way you can more effectively read them and get a better idea of what's out there. What this does remove, though, is the correct azimuth. Okay. Remember, azimuth is any contact's position and relevance to the aircraft, your aircraft. Okay. So if we unpause again and we turn the offset off you can see that they're approaching our 12 o'clock position that is accurate okay if we were to look way out there and unfortunately they're too far out that we can't even see them from here but the f-15s are truly out here they're really at our 12 o'clock but when we go back and we hit that offset again okay this is no longer accurate okay they may not actually be in that position okay so it's important to remember that so the next thing is, 
is before you can effectively use the RWR, you have to know how to read it, and that's where it gets tricky. Okay, you can understand what the symbology, you can understand what the hafus are and things like that, but you may not understand how to identify what the emitters that you're being that are picking up are. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to we're going to back out of the sim for just a minute, and I'm going to show you guys a kneeboard that was made by one of our community members. Um, that we can install in the aircraft and bring up and you can use this knee board on any of the aircraft But I'm going to show you how to put it in place specifically for the F-18C um, And then we'll take a look at um, how to use it. So stand by for a second and we'll jump right on that All right guys, so now we are out of the sim and we've gone to DCS's website Okay, and the link for this RWR uh, Quick Look Knee Board will be down in the description below. Again, give Bailey a big shout out out on the forums or in the comments below here. Uh, it's absolutely uh, awesome. Very nicely worked. Nicely done work. So what you're going to be looking at here is this under ID is what you're going to see on the RWR. So the HN, HN, DT, 6, 8. That's what's actually going to pop up on the RWR. And what this is telling us is what it means. For example, 13 is a Strela, 15 is a Tor. Okay, now you're probably wondering, well, the 15, we saw the F-15. You're going to have aerial contacts and ground contacts, and some of them may have this, the same uh, identifier, but they'll have different um, uh, icons and, and symbology around them that will let you know uh, ground target versus air target. Okay, and we'll go into that here in just a minute. So anyway, so now that we have that, what we're going to do is Go ahead and close this guy. I've already downloaded it. You just press the download button here. So we're going to go ahead and go to our downloads folder. And if you have 7-zip or anything like that, you can just open up the archive. Okay. And what we're going to do is copy just the images out. And they actually might be the same image. Let me see these real quick. Nope, they're not. Okay. Uh, let me check that one. 11, 12, yep, nope, you want all four of these. Okay, so we're going to grab all four, and we're just going to copy, and you're going to go to your um, saved games, so Overkill, Saved Games, DCS Open Beta, and obviously this will be whatever username you have your computer named. Okay, and then we're going to look for this kneeboard folder. If you have never installed a custom kneeboard, this folder may not exist. That's fine. Simply create it and just make sure it is spelled exactly as you see here. Okay, we're going to open it up. And then, uh, same thing with these. These are all the aircraft that I have custom kneeboards for. If you have never created one or you do not have this one, this is how you're going to name your folder. Simply create a folder and title it FA-18C underscore Hornet. Okay, but exactly like you see here. All right, open it up. And you can see that I've actually already dropped these guys in, all right, and uh, along with a couple other kneeboards. So from here, that's it to installing a custom kneeboard, okay? And then all we have to do is simply close that out, and I will see you guys back in the sim in just a minute. All right, so we're back in the sim, and so now let's go ahead and find our kneeboard. Now, the first thing I'll show you guys is the kneeboard controls. So if you just hit K on our keyboard to get to it quickly, you have a couple different options. First thing here is the kneeboard current position mark point. Um, right control and kilo on your keyboard. If you are on any of the map pages, okay, uh, that have your waypoints assigned to them, I'll show you guys what that looks like here in just a second. Um, you can use right control K and it will actually create a mark on the kneeboard showing where you are on the map, as long as you're on the right page. Then you have K here, kilo by itself, uh, we'll bring up the kneeboard for as long as you hold the key down. If you let the key go, the kneeboard will turn off. Right shift K uh, will set the kneeboard as an on and off. So tap right shift K, the kneeboard will come on, tap it again, you'll turn it off. And then the open and close brackets that are just down to the left of the backspace button for American keyboards at least, um, will allow you to cycle through the different pages. So let's take a peek. So we're going to get back in the sim here. We're going to do our right shift in kilo here. And the first thing I'm going to do is show you guys the right control K. And we are on the wrong page. So I pressed it and you can see nothing's here. So if we expand out a bit, there. You can see this 
purple triangle, this carrot that was made. That's our aircraft position and, and position in relevance to waypoint one. Okay, but we want to keep on going. Let me make sure active pause is on. There we go. And let's start cycling through the pages. Now we're going to go past the maps to get to our custom pages. So past the maps, past the maps. There we go. So now we've started the custom pages. And however you see them in the folder, that's how you're going to see them in the aircraft. So we're going to get past all the munitions stuff here. All right, and here's where it begins. So here, as I showed you guys briefly um, when we were looking on the website, this is the ID. So this is what we're going to see on the RWR, okay, is anything under the ID. And then this section is what you're actually looking at. All right, so let's do something real quick that I know isn't necessarily covered on this. So I'm going to turn this off for a minute. And what we're going to do is bring up, let's bring up an EWR that's off all by itself. Okay, so if you look, we zoom in on it, you can see it sort of looks like a radar dish. All right, so let's go ahead and bring up our knee board. And this particular icon is not on here. Okay, so it's important to understand that not everything is there, but in all true essence, that particular contact isn't lethal. Okay, it's just a, a radar. That's all it is. It's got no weapon system attached to it. It's not part of a, a weapon signature. Okay. But if we were to bring up the, let's say we bring up an SA-10 system. Okay. So now if we hit pause. Oops. There we go. Now you can see. These S's are EWRs that are a part of um, weapon systems, okay? So keep that in mind that this, these are both search radars, but this one is the search radar of a weapon system, okay? And particularly, this is going to be the SA-10 system, but we'll see what that looks like in just a minute. All right, so let's unpause again here. And we'll turn our knee board off. And to bring up one more, actually, let's go ahead and bring up everything. So we have all kinds of things happening now. Okay. So first, guys, listen to the tone. And now it's pause. All right. So what we got here, got a couple of different pieces of information. Let's lock the camera. All right. So let's go over everything that we've got. So the first thing that's happened over here, and actually before we do that, let's hit the offset button. Oh, that is on. There we go. That's better. So sometimes you have to cycle it. Oh, pause. Hoo-hoo. Got all kinds of stuff happening. All right. So this is going to be pretty exciting. So here's what has happened. So first off, to talk about the range of things, okay? Um... We can see that we have some 29 indications out here. Doesn't necessarily mean they're MiG-29s. Okay. Um, the It can be a MiG-29. It can be SU-33 and SU-27, I believe, will all have the 29 signature. And that's because they use the same radar suite. You have the A-50 out here. This is an AWACS. Okay. It's the uh, Russian AWACS. Here we have the SA-10 system here, but these are just the search radars. But look at this guy. This says 10. And look where it is. It is now in the critical zone. Okay, so let's look at where everything is in reference to the actual aircraft. So here's our EWR. Okay, so that's this guy right here. And then here's the SA-10 site. Okay, so if we click this guy here, that's our targeting radar. And then click this guy or this guy. These are search radars. Okay, you have a uh, 5 November 66 Mike search radar, and you can tell that by the SR here. And then we have a 64 Hotel 6 Echo. Okay, another search radar. Okay, and all they are is different ranges, is my, my understanding. But if we go back to the cockpit, keep in mind they're all basically in line. But the SA 10 system, okay, the targeting radar right here, is this. And this is why I was telling, trying to tell you guys, it has nothing to do with range. Okay, it has to do with threat. And what this means is, 
it's fired on us, is essentially what has happened. When the targeting radar takes over, you'll get the identifier of the 10, which if we go back to our knee board, and don't worry if we get hit, I have the aircraft set to invincible, so. 10, here it is. S300PS targeting radar. Okay, so we saw the 10 here on the screen. It's flashing right now, so it went away. But we saw the 10, and now we get to identify what it is. It's a targeting radar. And it just so happens it's a targeting radar for the SA-10. All right. Now, the other thing that I want to show you guys. If we unpause our camera. Bring up all of our lights here see what's going on and I'm gonna pause again oops damn it I didn't want to do that I'm on a roll here there we go pause the camera not the game okay so let's take a look at these enunciators here of what's going on when the search radar that was up here the one with the s okay and how by the way let me back up just a hair real quick you saw that the contacts had a house over them okay any contact that has a house over it is a ground target. Any contact that has a carrot above it like this is an air intercept, so a fighter. And any target that has the hafu above it like this is a friendly aircraft. And anything that doesn't have anything is considered non-lethal and so it doesn't identify. Okay, so carrot, enemy aircraft, or presumed enemy I should say, okay, air intercept, hafu, is friendly aircraft and house is um, ground target now look at this one here in the 10 T we have our house identifying it as a ground target and the bottom half foo on anything the bottom half foo here means that you are locked okay so here's where this becomes a little bit more critical let's come back up here now when the search radar had us the SAM light lit up. Okay, that let us know that hey, this has been detected as a surface-to-air missile system. If any of these MiG-29s out here, which are actually Su-33s, if any of them lock us up, we would get, or I should say, scan us. We would get AI for aircraft intercept. If something like a Shilka, okay, the uh, uh, ground air vehicle has the half tracks or the tracks on it and it's uh, got the big gallon gun up on top of it okay that's anti-aircraft artillery okay that's gonna light up continuous wave this one's a big deal an object that uses continuous wave is for example for our sake our weapons on the f-18 that would use continuous wave is the aim 7 sparrow Okay, remember when we fire the Sparrow, the hosting aircraft or the launching aircraft must maintain radar contact until the missile hits the target. Okay, that is a, an example of continuous wave. So you can bet your butt that when continuous wave is lit up, you've been fired on as we have here. So if we unpause, notice continuous wave is lit up. Okay, and it gives you the azimuth to the radar signature, and that's what this is, is the, the azimuth line. It lets you know where that threat is coming from. Okay, so we have a continuous wave coming from the ground down here, okay, and it's been identified as an SA-10. It's now in the critical band um, because it is assumed, this is the way to think about it, is anything in the critical band, it's assumed that you have been fired on. The SA-10 missiles get all of their telemetry from the targeting radar down below on the ground. It doesn't go pit bull like an AMRAM. If it was an AMRAM, for example, at first you'd see continuous wave. Once the missile went pit bull or the missile's own guidance system took over, you would actually see it in this circle here with a big M on it flashing, indicating it's a missile. Okay. So I hope all in all this is pretty... Um, explanatory um, as far as how to use the R RWR. Um, I'm really trying not to go too crazy into detail um, as I don't want to confuse anyone. So I'm going to do a real quick recap. You have critical, critic, or um, excuse me, critical, lethal, and non-lethal rings. Carrot above your identifier is a air intercept or presumed hostile aircraft. A house over any contact is the 
indication that it is a surface target or surface emitter. Anytime you get a hafu underneath it, any of these, it could even be these friendly over here. If a hafu appeared under it, it would mean that one of these friendly F-15s have locked us up. Anything that comes into this band and you see continuous wave, it is very likely that you have just been fired upon. The distance of contacts from the center to the outer ring determines threat, not range. So make sure you understand that. The farther away it is or closer it is has nothing to do with how close it is physically to the aircraft. Pay attention to your enunciators up here. You have SAM, AAA, AI for aircraft, continuous wave for you have a solid lock and high intensity lock is what it is. And again, you've likely been fired on. Okay, be sure to use your knee boards. Um, to, and you can cycle through the pages. He's got two pages for ground reference and two pages for air reference. Find your identifier here. Use your offset. Okay. And then you can come to this page and determine what it actually is and whether or not it's a target that you want to prioritize. Okay. Um, it's very likely here in a second that the missile is going to hit us, but I really don't care. All right. Sorry about that. Had another crash there. That was exciting. Um, okay. So... I've pretty much gone over everything I want to go over today. Um, there is still more that I can show you guys. There's absolutely more to the RWR. That's kind of a cool missile shot coming up at us. Um, but this is the basics that I wanted to get you guys into today. Um, we will absolutely go further in depth. I think as we get through the tutorial, especially the harm, I'll show you a few other things as we're going through it. Um, but, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Leave any questions and comments below as usual. Be on the lookout for a brand new access tuning tutorial. I know everybody hates the, uh, radio comms, uh, effect that I tried to use when I first started the channel. That was literally like one of my first few videos. Um, it, yeah, that was an oops. Um, so I have remade that and I'm going to get that out to you guys uh, this weekend as well. Um, but, uh, as usual guys stay safe and, uh, we'll catch you in the next one.